Welcome back. In this video, I'll be sharing my journey of building a business that supports a life that I enjoy living. If you want to learn more about how we got here and what my journey as sustainability advisor has been to this point, then here's a recap video that I filmed in midsummer. I cover how I got started with sustainability, uh, what kind of projects I've worked on so far, and what my dreams and hopes are for the rest of the year. But what does it actually mean to build a business that supports a life I enjoy living? For me, that is working on things that support building a more sustainable and more inclusive business environment, all while taking care of myself and my loved ones. That's uh, a quite an interesting ambition in these times where people leave home early morning, work till late in the evening, then go to networking events and travel a lot and are busy, busy, busy all the time. I've been there, I've, I've done that. My current ambitions are really not heading in that direction. I want to live a slow life. I want to work on few but meaningful projects that bring value to the people I work with and uh, that by end of the day, make the world a better place. So let me share the journey I've been on since the video I filmed in midsummer. So shortly after midsummer, a project that I've been working on for approximately a year and a half came to a planned conclusion. It was an EU funded uh, project, ESI incubator. It was part of a bigger collaboration between local businesses, universities, uh, nonprofit organizations. In that project, we developed a four month incubator program that helped teams develop their business idea and create the first prototype and validate the idea that they have. And my role in that as the program director was to develop the program curriculum and mentor 36 teams through that journey. This was something that I had done before, but at the same time, it was really, really interesting because when you work with so many different teams, the experience and insight that you get is uh, really wide and uh, every day you learn something new and it's really, really interesting. But all good things have to end at some point and so did this project. And uh, this was the moment when I finally had all of my time of the day to spend on uh, impact house related projects. I could just solely focus on one thing and I figured I better use that opportunity. As maybe you remember in the spring this year, I launched a short mini video course on ESG materiality assessment. The idea was to give easily accessible practical guidance on what the company's first step towards developing an ESG strategy should be. The idea was to pack a lot of practical knowledge and insights into one short video course. So companies that are just starting on their ESG strategy development process can just watch that and have everything they need in one place. But somehow, I didn't really turn out the massive success I was hoping it to be. Looking back, I understand why. So um, with the learnings from that experience in the spring at the end of August, I sat down and decided I have to build on top of that. Stopping there would be wasting the lessons that I had learned and the time that uh, I had spent acquiring and learning all of these things. I also decided that I would do pretty much only that for the rest of the year. I had to put everything else in the parking to give this next version of an online product the best possible chance of success. To me, that's something that feels super scary and I had to really sit down and be honest with myself because I really wanted this YouTube thing to grow fast and uh, at the same time I want to show up on LinkedIn regularly I also want to do this and I want to do that but the thing is when you are starting a new thing um, just figuring out every step of the way is already challenging so what did I actually do for the upcoming four months first I realized I should take my own advice and build on the skills that I already have the online video course on ESG materiality assessment was something completely new to me. 
I learned about what is Thinkific and how to put together a course curriculum and how to record a video lessons and how to pack it in a way that people understand the idea. But that's not what I know how to do. I realized I am pretty good at putting together uh, longer program curriculums. I've done that for the ESI incubator I just wrapped up. I've done that for Startup Wise Guys Accelerator program. I've done this before, just for a different audience, for startups. So what I did is I created a more extensive program, a total of 12 hours of content in the period of six weeks. I also realized that the initial product didn't really solve the problem that our customers have. Yeah, ESGMT reality assessment is part of building an ESG strategy. That's the first step. But uh, it's hard to commit to doing a materiality assessment if you don't understand how that plays into the bigger picture and why you actually need to do it. So I realized I need to help solve the actual problem that sustainability managers have building an ESG strategy. And one more thing I realized, I don't necessarily need to do this alone. Yes, I have experience with sustainability topics. I have developed strategies and help set goals and KPIs, but by no means I know everything uh, that there is to know around the subject. But I do know a few people who I look up to, uh, who I know have the experience that I don't. So I asked uh, some of the um, sustainability experts I know in the field to join me on this adventure and uh, contribute to the program with topics that they shine in. These three changes uh, in my approach made me feel confident in uh, what I'm putting out in the world. So for the first time in the Impact House history, I actually focused on proper marketing, sales, and doing that for one specific product for an extended period of time. Uh, turns out that uh, works. <laughs> yep. So happy to report that this new approach resulted in us creating a new program, ESG Strategy Know How. And we had six participants who started the program at the end of October, all the way from the UK, Denmark, and also Latvia, of course, because that's our home market. The participants that we attracted uh, mostly were ESG managers in larger businesses, but we also had some ESG consultants who were looking for ways to upskill their toolbox and learn what the best practices are. Now the program is over. I'm gathering feedback and looking at what should be improved, what could have been done better. But the overall consensus is that the program delivered on the promise and that participants would recommend this to others, which is the most important thing by end of the day. So now the only question remains, what's next? We'll do it all over again and take it to the next level based on the feedback that we received from participants and also the program mentors that participated. So I'm really looking forward to the next edition because that's going to be even better one. And what's also exciting is that I think I'm going to allow myself to take some things out of the parking. We'll see how that goes, uh, but I'm going to try to show up on YouTube a little bit more and also post more on LinkedIn and do it in a little bit more systematic approach. So if ESG is a topic that is on your agenda, you're trying to figure out how to put together an ESG strategy, then make sure to subscribe this channel and uh, stay in the know about all things ESG, because that's going to be the topic that I'm going to be focusing on in the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching till the very end of the video. For those of you who've stayed this far, here's a more personal update. One second, I'm gonna grab the cat. Um, the highlight of the year? For sure. Really confused, Gato. He was sleeping. Thank you for showing up. We're really glad to see you. Oh, Munchkin. I'm dutifully paying the cat tax over here. If you don't have a cat yet, get it. I wish you a joyful holiday season and a happy new year. Thank you for watching.